Welcome back. This video is pretty much being made to appreciate Ten Hag after that brilliant performance in the Community Shield final, which, by the way, Man United lost. But I think Ten Hag deserves massive credit for what he did in that game. His changes during the game, the way he changed the game in the second half, the way he changed the mentality, the intensity of the game is really, really hard to do against a Man City team. But it's, it takes bravery, it takes courage, and that's what he showed. Now, let me explain you in some detail because I've made these notes. You can see this is notes, then I've made this diagram, then I've made the notes for the second half behind the page. So I'll take some time to actually explain what I want to say here. But starting with the first half, Man United looked really poor. Man United looked poor in build-up. Man United looked poor in playing out from the back. They looked directionless. They had no direction. Where to go, when to go. Weight of pass was poor. Nothing was really working. And Man City was just way better. They hit the bar in the first half. Man City's build-ups were better. Man City were really finding it easy to deal with Man United's build-up. And everything, in a lot of ways, was very easy for Man City, while it was very difficult for Man United. They were struggling to get out of the first phase of build-up. They were not able to get the ball to the white players. They were not really able to get the ball to Bruno or Mason Mountain. It was quite a frustrating first half. And during the match, if you notice properly, the crowd in the Man United end actually went crazy. And they were the sound of frustration was very clear because they can see that they're starting a build-up and the build-up is getting failed right when someone like Casemiro or Kobe Mino gets the ball. Because when they get the ball, there is a lack of movement, there is a lack of clarity, there is a lack of direction. And at the end of the day, it was a very poor first half of Man United. But credit to Ten Hag, because what he observed is, he observed that Man City are struggling. Struggling in the sense that, of course, the first half Man City were better than Man United. But, it, but when I say struggling, I mean, Man City weren't at their best. Man City had moments of mistakes, had moments where they can be caught in that first half. And these spells is what Ten Hag actually observed. And that actually worked upon it. So in the first half, Man United were, you, you know that, uh, that box shade that teams are taking where one of the fullback actually enters in the midfield as a double pivot, as a double, double six. And what happens is a box is created and the back four converts into a back three. That's what was happening in the first half for Man United. And mostly in the second half too, but majorly in the first half, Lisandro Martinez, most of the time, it was him who was coming inside, creating a double pivot with Casemiro, Kobe Mino stepping slightly up forward with Mason Mount or Bruno, whoever was dropping in, but it wasn't working. They were trying to create numerical advantages. They were, they were trying to create options to break through the lines, but it wasn't working. But what I saw from Ten Hag is he understood two things. Man City aren't at their best. This Man City side that we are facing today is really, really gettable defensively. We can get in behind them. And if we do that, we can have a good game. But that's not it. He also observed, which is very great to do, is that his team is struggling to play proper possession-based, playing out from playing out from the back, build up football because it's Man City. It's one of the best pressing teams in the world. So he changed it, not in terms of personnel necessarily, which is which he did later in the second half, but he changed in terms of the intensity of the game. He asked the players to be more intense. He changed the mentality of the players. He asked them to be more forward thinking. He asked them to be more aggressive. And by the time the second half started, the first thing I noticed in the second half was Man United. First of all, I think he really gave, gave them a hearing in the dressing room. And when the second half started, I noticed Man United being ultra, ultra aggressive in their pressing. Man City, in the first half, when they were playing out from the back, Man United were allowing them to come almost into their half, setting up in not a low block, but in some sort of a medium block, not really press, pressing them high when they're backwards the ball. But when the second half started, when Akanji had the ball, when Diaz had the ball, when Guardiola had the ball, Man United were committing to press in heavy numbers. They were committing man to man. They were committing really highly. They wanted to press. The second thing I liked in the second half about Ten Hag, the changes he made, it, not the changes, not the substitution, the changes in terms of the changes in which how he wants the team to play, was they were way more transition based. So wherever you in the world back, you go. The offensive transitions where Liverpool have been very famous over the years under under Klopp. And that's what he changed. And in the build-ups, I was looking at, they were, they were still playing out from the back. They were still trying to play through the lines. But what they were doing is doing it slightly quickly, doing it in a more precise manner. And what it was happening is they were not trying to necessarily play a lot of passes, but it was quality over quantity. Play out from the back, 
get the ball to the midfielders or the fullbacks and get it to the wide players as soon as possible. And Bruno also started to go up a little bit too deeper in the second half, which actually helped because then he put on Garnacho, Rashford and Garnacho, they were extremely direct. They were extremely forward-thinking, and Bruno dropping in and pulling the center house with him, it allowed Garnacho and Rashford to enter into the space which was being opened up because of the movement that Bruno Fernandes actually was making. Now, the two major changes. First of all, he asked his team, boys, we are not doing well, but they are not doing that well either. So let's press them hard. Let's actually impose ourselves on the game. Let's not be scared, let's commit heavy in numbers and let's press them, let's win the ball back and wherever we win the ball back, we go from there. And every time in the second half, Bruno got the ball, he played it to Ganacho, he played it to Rashford. Every time Mason Mount got the ball, he did the same. Their build-up play was still in that box shape, was still with typical the way you play out from the back, but it was slightly quicker. And the goal this time was to get the ball to Bruno or to Mason or to Marcus or to Ganacho as soon as possible. And we can see in the second half the amount of times Man United actually got in behind Man City. That brilliant cross from Garnacho where Rashford mishit it and hit the bar. Another brilliant cross from Garnacho from the right wing where he played a brilliant cross to the far post. But sadly, no one attacked the ball, which was disappointing to see because such a good delivery, someone needs to be there and attack it. Someone like McTominay, who is really good in the box, attacking headers, but he didn't do it. So what they did was basically was they started to commit more players forward. They started pressing City really high. The changes Ten Hag made, the McTominay change was interesting because he almost asked Mr. McTominay to play as a number 10, to be that extra man, to be that attacking runs in the box when the crosses are coming in. But at the same time, he asked him to be a third midfielder when Man City had the ball. So when Man City had the ball and they put on De Bruyne and they were building up really well, Oscar Bob had a brilliant game. It was McTominay who was rather with his work rate making it a three in midfield instead of a two when Man City had the ball to help Casemiro more and to help that young lad, I think it was Collier who came in to help him more. Now, even though Man United lost this game and they lost this game when the game was in under their control twice, so they went one nil up, lost the game from there. In penalties, they were up by one goal and then they lost it from there. So, of course, there is element of criticism towards Senag and his players that they couldn't manage the game well enough to actually see it out or to actually get another goal when they could have. But what I'm seeing with the season starting, with all the signings that Man United have made, what I'm seeing is brilliant observation, tactical observation from Den Haag, understanding how the game is being played, what is the rhythm of the game, which team is actually having the better of it right now, and making changes accordingly. And by changes, again, I say, Changes not in terms of substitutions, but changes in terms of the way we play, the mentality we play with, the approach we have, the intensity we play with. Do we press high? Do we draw back? Because low block is bad and high press is good. That's not what I'm saying. It's about the situation. If the situation requires you to press high or if the situation is allowing you to have an opportunity where you can press high and benefit from it, he took that opportunity. He didn't ask his players, guys, we are still in a clean sheet. Let's just say that. He said, we are in a clean sheet, but I can see that Man City are not at their best today and we can really benefit from that. that. And he asked them to press high. Press high, commit numbers forward. And even Man United, when they had the ball, they were committing more players in the box. They were committing more players forward. And even when they didn't have the ball and they were pressing Man City in the final third, they were committing heavy numbers forward. So I'm not going to go too deep into this one because at the end of the day, it's the community shield and it's pretty much part of the preseason, so I'm not going to dive too deep into a game which we might shouldn't be reading much into. But one thing that I'm really impressed with Ten Hag, and I will be looking forward to actually seeing what he does about it in the coming matches in the season, is that how well he does this in every game, where he goes with a plan, we're going to do this, but if that plan isn't working and you can see the opposition is allowing you to benefit from another plan, he goes for it. So that decision making is what I'm going to look for. That's interesting. Let me know your thoughts. If you observe the same thing that I observe, if you agree with me or if you disagree with me, if you think he made a mistake going that way and maybe that's the reason why they lost or maybe substitution cost in the game, whatever it is, let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you soon in the next video. Thank you.